In our life, change is the constant. However, when changes happen in our environment, it's not always nice and pleasant for us because we are in a passive mode and we have to adjust to these changes. Now, innovation gives us an opportunity to become proactive and to trigger changes, to influence changes and to move things into the direction we want to see them moving. The Stiftskirche of St. Gallen is among the finest Baroque-style cathedrals in all of Europe. Equally impressive is its library, a place where since more than 1,300 years knowledge has been recorded, making it one of the world's oldest continuing libraries and making St. Gallen a center of science throughout the centuries. The German software company SAP established its research center on innovation management here in the city of St. Gallen. Its director, Dr. Ulrich Eisert, is currently collecting a library of innovation management concepts. He provides us with his favorite learnings on innovation. I'd like to focus today only on two aspects that are extremely important from a practical perspective, but usually not as much highlighted as they should be highlighted. The first topic is about sequential versus iterative innovation approaches. And the set second topic is about incremental versus disruptive innovations. As you will see later on, the two topics are somehow interrelated. Let me start with the latter one, incremental versus disruptive innovations. So obviously this is about the degree of innovativeness. But what is at the core of the difference between these two types of innovations? Well, incremental innovations build on the existing. They build on existing technology, they build on your existing capabilities, they build on well-known customer needs from well-known customer segments. So usually incremental innovations lead to an improvement or advancement of an existing solution. So something like a new version of the existing solution. In contrast, disruptive innovations break with the existing. So they break with the existing capabilities because new technologies might need new capabilities. They break with existing markets because new customer needs can be found maybe only in new markets. So disruptive innovation is about a disruption, a discontinuity, and it also requires sometimes a disruption within your own enterprise. Now you know about the difference between incremental and disruptive innovations, but how should they be evaluated? Are incremental innovations better than disruptive innovations or vice versa? Well, most people would agree that on the long run, enterprises need to be able to come up with incremental as well as disruptive innovations. So both types of innovations are needed. However, companies can only be successful in pursuing that if they understand the difference and if they understand the implications. What are these implications? First of all, Disruptive innovations are only possible if enterprises are ready to cannibalize existing competencies as well as markets and the related investments. Hence, disruptive innovations ask for dynamic capabilities, that is, the ability to reconfigure your assets to the new requirements. And they also ask for a willingness to cannibalize existing investments. This is extremely hard to do. However, if you don't do it, somebody else will do it sooner or later. Secondly, if disruptive and incremental innovations are both done in the mainstream organization, usually disruptive innovations will be killed. Why? Because they do not fulfill the requirements that the organization usually has, in particular in regards to predictability. The reason for that is that disruptive innovations cannot be predicted in terms of time and effort needed 
or revenues to be generated. That's why disruptive innovations need some protection. They might need a dedicated organizational area and they will always need some senior management support. Later on, when there is a stable business around the disruptive innovation, it might be possible to reintegrate these disruptive innovations in order to leverage some synergies. These approaches are, and that's my last point, obviously iterative approaches. Exactly, that's where the two topics come together. So disruptive innovations need iterative innovation approaches. And the reason for that is that you have to modify the solution again and again, confront your customers with a solution in order to figure out where you can find the ultimate fit between your new solution and a new customer demand that was not fulfilled up to this point. Okay, now we have seen that iterative innovation approaches are suitable for disruptive innovations. However, from my practical experience, I would suggest an iterative approach even for rather incremental innovations. Why? Let me explain that with the example of business model innovations. When you think about a business model innovation, you also have to go through certain phases such as analysis, design, validation, and so on. However, if you do that in a sequential process, you do not have an intermediate result for a very long time. So that's why we recommend when you start a business model innovation to take all your current thoughts, all your current assumptions and to put them in a first initial baseline. Then you can do all types of iterations based on that baseline. For example, you could analyze one element of your business model in more detail, gain some insights and improve the business model accordingly. Or you could challenge your business model in general, come up with some totally new ideas and modify the business model accordingly. So the nice thing about it is basically that you always start with a baseline and you come back to your baseline and you have an updated version. So what are the advantages of an iterative approach? First of all, you always have an intermediate result that you can present, discuss and share with others. Secondly, there's always a common ground for all team members and for all stakeholders around the team. Thirdly, the approach is very transparent, so you can see the progress step by step. And fourthly, and most important, this approach is very flexible, very agile, because you can always decide for which type of iteration you want to go next. So are there no differences between incremental and disruptive innovations in regards to iterative versus sequential innovation approaches? Well, yes and no. Yes, because I would recommend an iterative approach for all types of innovations. No, because for incremental innovations, you can plan the iterations much better and you need less of them. For disruptive innovations, you have to be prepared to do many, many iterations, in particular when it comes to testing and prototyping. And you have to be very patient until you ultimately find the right fit between your new solution and the new need of a customer you want to address. So I hope I could introduce two interesting aspects of innovation to you today. The first one was about iterative versus sequential innovation approaches. And the second one was about differences between incremental and disruptive innovations. If you need further insights, please go to the materials section. Thank you for watching the video.